just now to say thank you, oh King. You're not just a part of my life, but my everything. Your love reaches way down deep within, passes human understanding. There will always be a song for you, I sing. One word alone just can express my heart's desire. Gratitude for one more day, my needs supplied. Your warm embrace and tenderness, patient with me through all my mess. I come to one conclusion, you are the best. Good evening, my name is Leah Marie and welcome to our television broadcast, Sinning Point. We are from Pillars of Truth Ministries, a church in the heart of the community with a heart for the community. Join us every second and fourth Saturday of the month at 2.30pm for our program. So sit back, call a friend or neighbor and be ministered to by our apostle. Hebrews 13 and verse 17 it says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself for they watch for your as they must give an account that they may do so with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you we we want to continue on that series the believers responsibility it is good for us to worship it is good for us to know the responsibility of the pastor. It is good for you to know the responsibility of the husband. And it's good for you to know the responsibility of the leaders of our country. But it's also good for us to understand our responsibility and the part we play in national development or church progression in Jesus' name. As Christian people, we are responsible to demonstrate proper respect for those in authority and reverence in the house of God. It is God who sets up authority and it is God who takes down authority. And so whether good or bad, we have a responsibility to show respect for those in authority especially in the church or the house of Almighty God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. Beseech you, brethren, to know them what labor among you and are over you in the Lord. And we admonish you to do what? To esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and to be at peace among yourselves. When we show respect for our leaders, it communicates our recognition for their position of authority and our desire to see them succeed. 
It does not mean that we would agree with every decision made. But we are committed to seeing the vision through even when we, our opinions differ to the leader's ultimate judgment. You see, God is a God of order. God sets up and God takes down. But that does not give us the right or the, 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 the right to disrespect people because uh, we don't agree with their particular opinions. Jeremiah 3 and verse 15, the Bible says, God said, I will give you pastors according to my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge. Pastors or leaders in the church of God are given to us by the Lord. And it's the shepherd over the flock and work directly with God. Now we, we all understand that there are some pastors who went, but there are those who were sent. And you have to be able to be in a right relationship with God to discern those who went and those who are sent. As a believer, respect implies, hallelujah, hallelujah, an additional responsibility that I, am, that I will lovingly intercede on the behalf of my leader that God will protect, show mercy, grace, and grant wisdom to that particular leader. How many of you pray for your leader? Don't raise your hand. God is watching. We all know that, that, that some leaders are easier to respect than others. But we have a Christian responsibility to honor, submit, serve honestly, and pray for our leaders in Jesus' name. And the reason for that is, the Bible says, that the condition in which we live can be peaceful. Hear what the Bible says again. Hallelujah. In, in our opening scripture verse. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourself. For they watch for your souls. That they must give an account. You have to understand that the leader is watching for your soul. And the Bible says that the leader has to give an account for you. It goes on to say that when they're given an account to God, you pray that they do it with joy. And not with grief. Because if your leader is pleading to God on your behalf with grief, it means that the Bible says it is unprofitable for you. How many of you give your pastor trouble? <laughs> First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2, I exhort thee, or therefore, that first of all, supplication prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for who? All men. Verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. I can hear a pin drop in the church, but I want to hear the pin drop. <laughs> Young people, let me, let me say this, two wrongs cannot make a right. And there is always a right way to do the right thing. Nobody's saying that you have to be like puppets on a string, but there is a right way to do the right thing. And if you're reading the Pauline epistles, the apostle Paul is addressing issues in the church. He's helping us to understand how we should live and represent Christ. Young people and teenagers should learn the value and wisdom there is in seeking counsel from their pastors. 
and lead us in the house of God. Let me say it again. Young people, hallelujah, and teenagers should learn the value of seeking counsel from their pastors and the leaders in the church of God. Before you, you get a boyfriend, seek your pastor's counsel. Even when you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or you have a man or a woman, seek your pastor's counsel. Marissa, seek his counsel. The counsel of your pastor, hallelujah, is, is as if it's the counsel of God. And sometimes it's hard to accept it. But at the end of the day, you would save your life. Sometimes we, we hear what everybody else has to say for us. Before we come to the pastor. And it's important, those of you who are going into marriage and want to get married, before you set any date, before you put anything on paper, seek the counsel of your pastor. Because it might very well be in the office, you may say, pastor, say, break it up. I am walking. You see, you have to understand that your pastor, once he's anointed of God, he represents God. And he sees what you don't see. What you see is love and, and you see butterflies and you see green men walking on the roof. You are so high. Psalms 1, 1, in, 1 verse 10, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the what? The beginning of wisdom. The Bible tells us that beauty is vain and favor is deceitful. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. We have a responsibility, church, to respect authority. And that's why I said this many years ago. But as a Christian person, we have no right to be disrespecting our leaders in the church and even outside the church. Your responsibility is to pray for your leader. Your, your neighbors could say what they want about the prime minister. Your next door neighbors could say what they want about the opposition leader. That's their business. But you as a Christian, a child of God, must set the example. Your responsibility is to pray for whoever has been established in authority in the land. It is God who sets up and God who takes down. Hallelujah. When we criticize leaders, we criticize God. Because, because they didn't just get there just like that. God who puts them there. He allow it to happen for a purpose. And when you criticize and condemn and you make a mess of yourself, what you're doing is saying, God, you don't know what you're doing. That's what you're saying in a nutshell. Indirectly, you are saying, God, you don't know what you're doing. But if you have a, a knowledge of the scripture, you understand that God even set up Pharaoh for a purpose. As a matter of fact, when Israel was leaving Egypt, the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart to go after them. God made so and he hardened his heart and said pursue them hallelujah because God wanted to show Israel that there was no other God who could deliver them but the God of Isaac Abraham and Jacob give him a praise here we have a responsibility to respect authority and reverence the house of almighty God eh? and when we practice them kind of thing disrespect we sow seeds into our children's life. Everybody have an opinion now, you know, and I have no problem with that. We're not here to control and dictate to nobody. But there's a right way of doing the right thing. You hear me and you? And even if you make a comment, hallelujah, but it's not profitable as a child of God, it comes across disrespectful. God will hold you accountable for that. Not everything we are going to always agree with. And how many of you here married and your marriage have no problems? You better don't wave your hand. 
And sometimes the issue is not really, hallelujah, what is said or what is done, but it's how we do what we do sometimes. And so we are good in church and we worship and we praise God and I have no problem with that. The house of God is for that. But when you leave here, there's supposed to be proper representation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, on your job, in your, in your home, at the school, young people, wherever you go, there should be a level, hallelujah, of respect, hallelujah, for authority in our lives. Everybody wants to hear the bless. But I want to talk to you. When I speak about respect, I want us to consider one thing and I'm closing one. Your attitude. Everybody say attitude. Say your attitude determines your altitude. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor, it is your attitude that determines your altitude. Say so next door neighbor, it is your attitude. Come on, look at them. It's your attitude. It's not the anointing. It's your attitude that determines your altitude. Hallelujah. It's your attitude. The attitude that Jesus had is what we want to adapt. He had the attitude of a servant's heart. Philippians 2, 5 to 7. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself what? Of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men oh father God. the attitude of Jesus was one of a servant as a matter of fact the Bible says but Jesus says I came to serve and not to be served You have a degree, you have a big job, you hang out with top people in the society, but if your heart is not right, all of your accolades are profits you nothing in Jesus name. There is a right way to do the right thing, Arif. We cannot want things our way all the time. And when you can't have your own way, you show some ungodly characteristics. Respect is not only required for those under authority, but also for those who are in authority. I am not only, you're not only supposed to respect me, but I'm supposed to also respect you. Ephesians 5 and 21. And that is what the, we, we face in our modern day society. What we are facing today is the lack of respect for authority. Outside in the community and it has crept into the church. How many of you hear people say in the church and nobody can tell me nothing? I don't care about them. <laughs> Submitting yourself one towards another in the fear of God. Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus and Paul is dealing with internal matters and he's saying, you know what? After husband, submit yourself to the wife and wife to your husband and so forth. He's saying, now submit yourself one towards another. Respect one another. I may not dress like you dress. I may not be, have the ability like you have. I may not have gone to university and, and have a doctorate or a master's. But you know what? In spite of all of that, we need to show proper respect one towards another in the house of God. Because nobody is better than anybody. The way we speak to people... And how we treat one another must be done in love. 
with respect and reverence in the house of God. How many husbands can say that, hallelujah, is the woman's mouth. It's not what she say, you know. It's she mouth, how she say it. Disrespectful, hallelujah. Half of many men, all they want is their wives to respect them, hallelujah. Respect their authority, hallelujah. You hear me? You hear about women talking about men not being providers, but there are a lot of women who are disrespectful with their mouths and their attitudes. And we have to change that in the house of God. Isaiah 53 and verse 7. Let's look at that. Jesus was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before her shares is dumb. And the Bible says what? And so he was opened not his mouth. Sometimes pastors and leaders and Christians, sometimes it pays to shut up. Come on, give him a praise. You, you don't have to always defend yourself and, and try to prove yourself. Psalms 46 and verse 10, the Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Sometimes it pays to shut up. It says, shut up. No, don't, don't tell a neighbor that. Don't tell a neighbor that. Look up to heaven and say, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Come on, beat your own chest and say, shut up. Hallelujah. Sometimes I need to shut up. I need to allow God to do what God has to do. I don't have to defend myself. The Bible says, like a lamb led to the slaughter, he was oppressed. He was lied upon. He was ridiculed. He was persecuted. But yet still he opened not his mouth. There is wisdom sometimes in you not saying nothing. And allow in God to vindicate your cause. There is much wisdom sometimes. You hear me, my friend. He who is quick to hear and slow to speak will save your soul. Some of you, your blood too close to your skin. Shut up. And the thing is, we could talk so much on the outside. Every two words, you want to hit somebody across. And when you come in church, you're like a dumb. The place you're supposed to praise and open your mouth is where you're shutting up. Here is where you're supposed to praise him. Open your mouth and bless him. Somebody want to bring back an against you, hush your mouth. Relax. It takes two to tango. Hallelujah. Relax. As long as you know that you are, you are, you're not in the wrong, relax. God will vindicate your cause. God, sometimes you try to defend yourself and you put yourself in more trouble. You need to let God fight your battles. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, if I hold my peace, then the Lord will fight my battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. So neighbor, hold your peace God will fight your battles God will bring you out God will take you out Leanne hold your peace but 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 pastor sometimes I feel so hold your peace I want to risk. hold your peace I want to hold your peace Sometimes it's, it's right there on my chart. Want to come out, but hold your peace. You serve a God who does not sleep. He don't slumber. Hallelujah. He will fight your battles. He will give you the victory. Sometimes it's important that you shut up. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord the Bible never said you but the Lord will deliver them you see you see the closer you get to God 
is the more of God that takes over your life. We sing the song, we want to be more like him. But I don't believe we really want to be more like him. I think we only sing the song because it's religious. And we are in the atmosphere for the song to be sung. But really, to become more like Christ means that you have to be going through some pressure. It means that you have to be lied upon and you will have to go through fires. You'll have to go through all kinds of things. Because the Bible says that even though he was God in the form of flesh, hallelujah, he did not thought it robbery or think it was a robbery to be equal with God. God, but he humbled himself. He, dis he destroyed whatever that could have bring division between him and his father. And he, he, he became obedient even to the death of the cross. You and I need to understand that sometimes he allowed things to happen because he wants to exalt you. But because or before he exalts you, he has to take you down. Before you go up, you must go down. Hello, somebody. There's a Proverbs in the Bible that says, Hallelujah, the seed must go into the earth, but except that seed dies, it has to die before it springs forth and gives a life. And one of the problems with the church today, we are too easy, Hallelujah, to get offended. We are too easy, Hallelujah, to be offended. Somebody mash your corner, you want to mash back their corner. The church has a serious problem with attitude. We need to demonstrate proper respect for those in authority. We, we, we don't go off. We call the women in the church sisters, yeah? And the men brothers. And some of the sisters or the brothers, and I mean, they don't mind you calling them by their name, but, but it's, 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 it's respect. Because if, if, if I say, Ravi boy, and, and some little child hearing me saying that, eventually when they see Brother Ravi, they're going to say, Ravi boy. So what you want to do is to teach them from now how to have a respect for those in authority. So at your home, I know some of you just be saying, Kamala and, and Rowley. I know it. Don't, don't watch me so. I know it. Don't feel I don't know. Mm. What wrong with the hero, Lee boy? And, and what wrong with the Kamala? What wrong with them? And your children are hearing that. Hallelujah. And they go to school and they say, who is the prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago? And they say, Rowley! <laughs> Because they have been taught from their home to disrespect authority. Hallelujah. And so what we practice is what we're going to become perfect in. That's why the Bible says in the book of Galatians, God is not mocked. He was not talking to the unsaved. He was talking to the Galatian brethren in the church. And he was saying, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man saw is what he's going to reap. He was talking to Christian people. People. We need to learn to have a respect in the house of Almighty God. Respect for your leaders. Respect for those in authority. Respect for those in power. Have some respect in the house of God. Thank you for taking time off to listen. We hope that you were ministered to by the Holy Spirit. Join us for any of our power pack services. Sundays, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Wednesdays 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Fridays 7 p.m. God bless you. Shalom.